Let's make a plant-based McRib sandwich. Okay, to make the McRib, first, we're gonna be starting with jackfruit. And this is going to be a seitan recipe as well, but we do start with jackfruit and we're starting with young green jackfruit. This is the exact one we're using. We get them at the Asian market. You can also get them on Amazon. When you open the can, you'll see chunks of the jackfruit. Looks like this, but we want it to look like that. So Derek is gonna come over and show you how to shred it. Okay, so the easy way to do this is that you'll notice that there is a solid centerpiece here and then very fibrous parts here. Hidden within those fibrous parts are seeds. Like this guy. Do you actually remove the seeds or do <laughs> I just chop them up? I do not remove the seeds. Lots of people that when they work with jackfruit, they just remove the seeds. What I actually do is I just get in there with my fingers and tear it into pieces. Yeah, break it up. Because what does it matter, right? Some people don't use the very core either. I think the core works just fine. It just takes a little extra effort to break it up. Yeah, I, I do the same method with the core. I just tear it apart with my fingers. Alternatively, if this is annoying and tiresome, which it kind of is, you can just dump the whole thing into your food processor and give it a few blitzes. Yes, we've done that for barbecue ribs before, but because this is such a small amount, we uh, tend to do it by hand. Okay, once you have your jackfruit all sliced up into shreds like that, they're a little bit big. I tried doing this in testing with the long shreds. It didn't really work very well, so I ended up cutting it in the seitan. But today, I'm going to do it right here on the board. All I want to do is just shorten those strands a bit. So I'm just kind of running my knife through. You don't want to make it into mush. Like, you don't want it to be a fine dice. But you want to, oh, one of those seeds. So you just smoosh it. You just want it a little smaller pieces so that it'll mix into the seitan that much easier. You don't have to get too crazy with it. Just want to make sure most of the big pieces have been broken up. Again, if you choose the blitzing in the food processor then route, you don't even have to do, this. Have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. And once I have that done, now I want to scoop it all up, and get it into a bowl. Now that we have our jackfruit prepared, the next step is we're going to add our vital wheat gluten. I'm using a quarter cup of vital wheat gluten. And yes, this is an important ingredient for this recipe. Half teaspoon of garlic powder, half teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of nutritional yeast, one half teaspoon of brown sugar, one half teaspoon of smoked paprika, one half teaspoon of beetroot powder. Optional, but I like the color it gives and it does actually add a little bit of an earthy flavor, making it more um, realistic. That's our dry ingredients. I just want to give them a mix. And I know brown sugar is sometimes considered a wet ingredient. And I Probably should have just put it in with the liquids, but it's okay. If you want to be that technical, the jackfruit probably is kind of a, yeah, a moist well, ingredient. Sure. <laughs> and I just want to make sure that this is fairly well mixed through so far, so that basically no piece of jackfruit gets left without some seitan on it or some vital wheat gluten on it. A quick note about making any seitan, the ratios of the dry to wet ingredients and the type of ingredients that you're using, plus cooking methods and temperatures are all really critical yeah. in retaining the texture and the moisture level of the particular different types of seitan. Okay, on to the wet. Now for this, I have a quarter cup of water and I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of liquid smoke. It started to settle. Get it all in there. You paid for it. Half teaspoon of sesame oil. I love using sesame oil in these kind of things. It adds such an amazing flavor and aroma to it. And it just makes it feel richer um, overall. It's the easiest way to describe it. And I have a half teaspoon of white wine vinegar. Now you might be wondering, why are these quantities so small? It's because this makes one sandwich. If you wanna make two, double everything. You wanna make three, triple everything. Now it's time to combine the wet and the dry. Hold back just a little bit in case. I like to use a metal spoon to do this because that way I can really scrape that bowl. But if you want to use silicone or, you know, whatever, it all works. There's still some dry in there. I want to mix it all through. I may actually need all that liquid. Then again, I might not. This looks pretty good. What I want to do now though, is get in there with my hands and start mixing that through. You're not really kneading it so much as mixing it. It will form a lot of gluten strands, but the jackfruit actually breaks them up. 
and it does get, it's a messy blob. It just, it's going to be. Now, something Derricka was touching on, um, a lot of people are asking, like, can I cook with a different method? You know, like, can I air fry instead of steam? Well, they're completely different methods. They will make for a completely different end product and texture. So you want to be careful. If I say to bake it, you probably want to try to bake it. If I say to steam it, you probably want to try to steam it. That's not to say you can't do it other ways, but you're probably not going to get the same result as what we did. Okay, that is about as well mixed as it's going to get. Believe it or not, it's gonna work. Don't worry about it. Okay, so we have our mixture, and what I have here is just a small pan with a little bit of parchment paper on it. This I find works best, but if you wanna use silicone like a mat, you can totally do that too. And I just wanna get all of our mixture basically onto that parchment. Try to keep it as one mass though, if you can. It'll make your life a lot easier in a minute. Again, get all that jackfruit. It's your jackfruit. Now this might look like a lot of mixture for one sandwich, but we're basing our our little mini rube loaf based on the bread size that we've chosen. So if you have a different roll that you're gonna put this on, then you might need less or more meat. And if you notice, I'm literally just using my hands and shaping it into a rib loaf, as Derek called it. <laughs> I happen to know we're using an Arnold uh, hoagie roll, which is about six inches long or so, and maybe like two inches wide. So that's kind of what I'm basing the size on. See, when I get to the edge like that, I want to press that in. Otherwise, it can crack and fall off. And you want this to be, um, you know, one piece when it comes out of the oven later. So, oh, speaking of the oven, you want to set your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius right here because I don't remember what it is. And you, we're going to bake these because baking this seems to have the best overall texture in the end. When I did the rib recipe, which we can link to that video too, it worked so beautifully when it was baked. I don't think steaming would work and I really don't think this would hold up to frying. So, yep, gotta bake it. This is now good to go. And if you see, it's kind of on the thick side. It This is gonna be a nice big slab of seitan. I'm gonna put it in the oven for 20 minutes. Okay, it wouldn't be a McRib without barbecue sauce, so let's make some barbecue sauce. This is a really easy one, but it's also really, really, really tasty. This is a quarter cup of brown sugar. I think it's dark brown sugar. And then the best sauce ever, half cup of ketchup. This happens to be Heinz Simply, so there's no high fructose corn syrup in it. By using ketchup, it's sort of a cheat but it's also a little bit of a shortcut because ketchup has some sugars. It also has some vinegar in it already. I have a half teaspoon of chipotle chili powder. Now this is a little bit spicy, but it's a little smoky too, and that's why I like it. If you don't have chipotle chili powder, you can use normal chili powder. One half of a tablespoon of soy sauce. One tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. This happens to be Bragg's. Um, I like that one a lot. One half teaspoon of garlic powder and to up the smokiness another half teaspoon of liquid smoke. Now what I wanna do is just mix this up before we apply any heat to it because some of these things that have a lot of sugar can burn really, really easy. So we wanna make sure it's a fairly well mixed ma mass before we get it onto the stove. That's a good point about the sugars is you really gonna keep an eye on this and not just set it and forget it. Because you mean like you, I did the other day? Because you may end up with a bit of a problem. Yes. She's speaking from experience. When we tested this, I put it on the stove and forgot about it. And a couple of minutes later, I was doing something else and it was bubbling. I hadn't burned it, but it was coming close. Okay, this looks mixed up enough. Onto the stove on probably about medium heat. And we're just going to cook it until it starts to bubble, then take it off the heat. But wait! I you, forgot something. You forgot the most important ingredient, black pepper. Fresh cracked black pepper, that is. Put in as much as you like. Erica I love likes black pepper. black pepper. Okay. I'd say that's probably a quarter teaspoon, maybe a little bit more. Mix that through. Now I'm ready to go over to the stove. <laughs> So after 20 minutes, our seitan is ready for the next step and our barbecue sauce is nicely thickened up. As you can see, look at that. Nice and thick and rich. What I wanna do now is get some of this onto this. So I'm just gonna slather some on there. No, this is not done yet. Please don't eat it now. <laughs> you also wanna be slightly gentle in your slathering because it's still a delicate piece. Oh yeah, it's quite delicate, so that's important. And I don't like to like, you know, put too much on it at this point. It's mostly just to get a little bit of a, a coating on it as it cooks. Okay, back in the oven, 
30 more minutes. Okay, so the McRib has some onion slices on it, but raw onion and I don't get along very well anymore, so Brian's gonna show you a little trick. I wanna get some onion slices. You can do rings if you want, you can do slices, however you like. They actually do slices, so that's the way I'm doing it. If it was up to me, they would be rings because they're much easier to control on a sandwich of that shape. But I didn't design it, so I'm gonna go with slices. Really simple, just... That's probably enough for four sandwiches right there. But see, we have our pieces. You wanna separate them a little bit. Now, we all know when you cut onions that they start releasing compounds that turn into sulfuric acid and make your eyes burn. Well, those same compounds can make them not taste real good and taste a little harsh. Well, there's one easy way to actually cool them down a little bit and make them not so hot. Water, just plain old water. Drop them in there for about five to 10 minutes and then dry them off and you have a sweeter tasting onion for sandwiches and things like that. Works really, really well. I mentioned briefly the bun that we're going to use. These are Arnold's hoagie rolls. They're actually pretty amazing. They are uh, completely plant-based, no, no milk products in them at all. But when you try to open it, see how it doesn't completely open? For some reason, they're not cut all the way through. And I actually need a top and a bottom for this. So I'm just gonna gently cut straight through so I get a top and bottom. And now I'm gonna put them in my grill pan and toast them up so they get grill marks. Okay, it's been like five or 10 minutes. Our onions should be ready to go. I'm just gonna fish them out with my hand, shake off some excess water and drop them onto some paper towels. And then just sort of pat them dry. You don't want them to be super wet when you're putting them on your sandwich because then it just makes everything kind of all watery and mushy and you don't want that. 30 minutes has passed and our McRib is looking ribby. Now I'm gonna to try to get it off of that parchment very carefully. Remember, fragile. And then we have our bun. Just gonna place it gently onto the bun. And of course, you know, gotta have more barbecue sauce on top. A lot, because it should be dripping with barbecue sauce at this point. I'm kidding, sort of. We kind of prescribe to the, if a sandwich isn't completely messy, then it's just no good. Exactly. On top of that, some pickles. The cheapest hamburger pickles you can find are usually the best ones to use on sandwiches like this. And I like pickles, so I'm using a lot of pickles. The smiley face is totally optional. Next, some onions. However much you like. I'm not gonna go too crazy. There's not a lot, a lot on a McRib, but uh, you know, a few is good. And if you can enhance that smiley face, it's even better. And then last but not least, the top bun. Give it a little pat pat, push it down a little bit. And there you have a McRib. We're gonna take some pictures and make some B-roll video of this. And we'll be back to show you how it tastes. And now is our favorite time of the video. It's tasting time. Yes, and when we tested these before, they were very, very hot. This has been able to sit for a couple of minutes. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I, you know, waste not, want not. This, that barbecue sauce can't get wasted. This is gonna be messy, but it's gonna be worth it. I can tell you that right yeah, now. Yeah, this is a big boy. I mean, look at that. That's, you know, the bread to meat ratio is important. You should never have more than twice as much bread to meat. In this case, we're doing pretty good here. But uh, are you ready? I'm, I'm ready. ready. I don't even know what to say. You just need to make this. It's that kind of good. The texture on that rib is just, it's amazing. And the flavors are so powerful. There's this magical thing that happens when you bake with a really sugary uh, barbecue sauce and that mm. it creates this neat crust that just it caramelizes the sugars, it adds a depth of flavor, and even a little additional texture that you wouldn't get otherwise. Agreed. This is a winner, babe. Yeah, this is fantastic. So if you miss the McRib, or you eat plant-based and they don't make it often enough for you in the area, or you can't get a plant-based McRib because I'm pretty sure you can't. Or you just want a really good sandwich. Yeah, just make these. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on The, the Bistro. Bistro.